Friends. We're jumping right in today using the Happy Haunting stamp set from the Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release. Unlike the collabs, this stamp set is available all month long. So if you fall in love with it like I did, you definitely still have a chance to grab yours. Um, I also am bringing in some things from my favorite things. I have the watercolor square stencil. That's how we're going to be making our background. I also have the spooky season six by six paper pad. We're going to use some pattern paper from that. And my inking today, I'm using orange twist, s'mores, and flame from Catherine Pooler. So I've been dabbling in the Catherine Pooler inks a little bit more lately. I added a few to my collection and I am now technically an ambassador for them, um, which is so exciting. So any links that you see from here on out for Catherine Pooler Inks will be affiliate links. Um, if this isn't like a sponsored thing, same with Simon Says Stamp. I'm just sharing products that I truly love with you guys. I still will be using my Distress Inks regularly, but I think that the Catherine Pooler ones are interesting because either the color or the saturation of these is just different than some of the options that I have with my Distress Inks. So if I can fill in gaps in my collection, you know we're going to do that. Um, so I am starting out by lining up my watercolor square stencil onto some heavyweight white cardstock. This is a 110 pound ice rink paper from Pink and Maine. That's the one. Um, and I'm going in with my uh, mini Simon Says Stamp inking brushes. And I'm starting out with just the tiniest bit of the s'mores. This is such a beautiful, rich, dark color. Then I moved up to uh, the rig bigger, like the regular sized blending brush in my orange one. And I'm starting out with flame. And you can see I'm coming in from the sides because I didn't want to build up a ton of that orange color at the bottom. And I didn't want any splotches being created across um, this panel, I really wanted a smooth blend, um, which considering that we're going to add some shimmer spray and distress this a little bit, it, I probably didn't need to be so careful. But um, I've used these inks a bunch for just regular inking and on some scrapbook pal projects that I've worked on, but I haven't combined them like this. I haven't done like an ombre like this before, and I was very pleasantly surprised by how easy this was. So I cleaned off my brush and went in with the same exact brush um, with that orange twist. I just kind of rubbed the excess flame ink off onto that microfiber towel I have down in the bottom corner. And then I could just go in with the orange twist and add that. Um, and while I have my stencil in place, I'm going to go in with the new Mulled Cider Mica Spray Stain from Tim Holtz in the Distress Line. It is beautiful. It's like not quite red, not quite orange. It has a beautiful shimmer to it. I love that it ended up coming out with like one side darker than the other. It's perfect for the look I was going for. So I'm gonna peel this off and you'll see there's a little smudge down on the bottom corner of my paper. We're gonna take care of that super easy. Um, and I just love how these My Favorite Things stencils work. I have a couple of these now. I got the circle and the rectangle. I'm all in for these guys. Um, I'm going in with my Tombow Sand Eraser and just that quick, that little smudge is gone. So if you don't have a Tombow Sand Eraser, please get one. Get, <laughs> get a Sand Eraser. Put it in your crafty stash because it is for real a game changer. So I decided to stamp out the little dragon from this happy haunting set that's holding the jack-o'-lantern. Um, I just thought he was so cute and he fit this square so perfectly. Um, but all of the images from this stamp set are adorable and I definitely intend on using this set a few more times um, this Halloween season because these dragons are just, I, I love the style of them. But then the Halloween aspects on top of that are even more adorable. So I temporarily put my stencil back in place so that I could stamp this spider web into the top corner. I'm going to end up stamping it with that same s'mores ink that we used in our blending. Um, it's so dark that it's almost black, but you can kind of just tell that it's not, which I think is fun. 
Um, and how beautiful is even just that spider web. So I thought this would be cute where the dragon is kind of carrying the pumpkin towards the spider web and that's why the pumpkin looks so afraid. I just think that's so funny. Um, I'm also going to stamp in my sentiment now directly onto my paper. And because I had the ombre going already, I decided to ombre my sentiment as well. So I'm stamping the whole sentiment with the orange twist. I'm going to stamp just the Halloween with the flame. And then I'm going to take the very edge of my s'mores and press it just along that bottom edge of Halloween. So we get kind of just that little hint of extra shadow. I went in and Copic colored all of, or not all of, my main image, and I stamped my image onto Copic Express It paper. This is by far my favorite Copic coloring paper. Um, I think it's just beautiful for blending in Copics. Um, I get mine off of Amazon, uh, but I know there are a couple card maker com or card supply companies that also carry it. Um, it's just been my go-to for a while and I haven't tried anything better. So I am going in with my Copics. I started out, I think it was with an E09 um, and now I moved up to a YR09 and I'm just going to start building in those shadows. Because I had used the flame and the s'more ink for my background, I knew that I wanted to pull in some really deep browns and those really kind of like burnt orange tones into my pumpkin to kind of help tie everything together because our dragon is going to be a little bit of a color pop on the card. So I am just kind of emphasizing those artist lawn artist drawn lines. Words are hard today, guys. Um, and then making sure that I'm still leaving a good bit of room right in the center there for that highlight, which is going to be that YR15. And that's going to get filled in all along everything that's left open. Then I am going to color in the stem. Nope, we'll come back to that. I decided to like I said, make my dragon a bit of a color pop. I really wanted to still figure out a way to bring in my Halloween triadic color scheme, that orange, purple, and green. And so I decided to color in my dragon purple, but instead of going for a true purple, I decided to change it up a little bit since my oranges were more on that like burnt end and not just like a super bright, like pumpkin-y orange. Um, I wanted to make this dragon with BV markers. So it's a little bit more of a cool toned purple. And I think that it's just so fun. It's not my go to purple color combination. Usually I would have uh, been gravitated towards like a V09, V17, V15. That's kind of my typical purples. But I love kind of playing with some new colors and seeing how they work together. And I think that the BV11 brings just enough of that kind of like pinky undertone um, that it balances everything out. And I love how this pairs so beautifully with that orange. I think they both just really enhance each other. And we'll bring in the green aspect for the spikes and like the accents on the dragon. And that way we get... Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about when you're picking your colors, you have like a, a gallon, a liter, and a cup or something like that, where you have like a ton of one color, which for us in this case would be the orange. Then you have a medium amount of the next color, which would be the purple, and just like a little hint of the last one, which would be our green. And I think that that really fits. Um, and I don't always do that intentionally. So I think that it's interesting that that just kind of is naturally how this turned out. So uh, that was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> I just sat down to create this night. I was kind of just had had a week and I um, cope and process with a lot of my stress and anxiety from my whole week with my card making. And I can kind of zone out and just enjoy the art and the artistry of coloring and my card making. Um, and so this was one where I kind of like looked up at the end and was like, oh, I like it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so now I'm adding in some W9 just solid color to the inside of the hollow parts of my pumpkin. 
We're going to use some deep browns uh, and some YGs to color in the pumpkin stem and the leaf. And then I brought in some true greens to do all of those accents on the dragon. So we have that um, E19 is my darkest shade. I'm adding in kind of to the bottom of the horns, a little bit to the wings and a little bit to the belly. My G05 is going to be my medium shade. We're just going to start kind of thickening up those lines and pulling the belly lines towards the center. And then YG13 is going to bring just enough pop and vibrance to this green combo to help it feel fun and whimsical and still in that Halloween spirit. Um, and at first I thought I was going to color the inside of the ear green, but I decided that pink would be cuter. And I even went in and gave this the tiniest hint of blush. I thought that it would be really fun to add some white details to the eyes of the pumpkin and the dragon, and I also added some little highlights to the horns and some to the scales around the cheek. So then I cut out the coordinating die from the set. I got this as a bundle from Simon, um, so everything kind of just came in one package, but I think that's so much easier when they just come that way. And like I said before, this stamp set was part of the Simon Says Stamp branded stamp timber release that came out on September 1st. And unlike all of the individual brand collaborations, their main release does get restocked and this will be available at least through the month. So you do have a chance to get it if you want. I am not affiliated with Simon. I don't have affiliate links, but I will link to um, this stamp set so you can find it directly if you're looking for it um, and yeah there we go so I wasn't sure exactly what pattern paper I was going to use but I fell in love with the kind of whimsical touch that this bold polka dot brought to the card so I trimmed down my panel of black with white polka dots from that spooky season pattern paper and added that to my side folding a2 sized card base um, I got my panel in place, just laid it down flat with my uh, Tombow Mono Permanent Adhesive, got that kind of centered up, and then I decided to add my dragon with just a little bit of the thin foam squares. This, these are the black thin foam squares from Simon. They're my favorite foam squares too. Um, and... I got that into position so his tail and his horns kind of break that wall of that ink blending, but I think that's just so cute. And then we did have the shine from the mica spray, but I really wanted to enhance it. And I have these teeny tiny um, orange sequins from This Calls for Confetti, and I love them. I love that they're so small. They don't distract from the image at all, but they just bring that extra little bit of shine and kind of fun. And I thought it played really well with the polka dot background too. So I sprinkled five of those across the card and that brings my whole card together. So I hope that you enjoyed this next video in our October Eve series. This one was so much fun to make. It makes me smile. I hope that you guys have an amazing week. I'll be back next week with a couple more videos. We're just chugging along our way through September. Um, until then, guys, I hope you have a great week and as always, happy crafting.